Global Seaweed is an initiative that is funded by the UK National Environmental Research Council. There is a lot of interest for seaweed cultivation as a sustainable way to produce biofuels, high value compounds and of course food. The idea behind Global Seaweed is really to look at the bigger picture and this experience of seaweed cultivation from other countries to identify the lessons that we can learn to be sure that we do things right when we implement cultivation techniques and management of this uh, developing sector. So we're all learning and we're all putting together ideas and trying. It's, it's very um, site specific. Things are different in diff different seaweeds, different environments. So it's how you adapt the, the, the things that we already know about growing marine organisms uh, to your own environment. And that's what's happening here in Scotland and it's what we're doing in South Africa too. So I wanted to come here to learn from the marine biology community, from the science community, from the global network of people who are concerned with this, by what means are they evaluating and designing these systems? And, and how does it apply to the kinds of food sovereignty, organic management, ecological principles um, that my community is so interested in? One of our expertise at SAMS is seaweed disease, algal pathogens, and we try to organize practicals where we can show to the students what a real pathogen looks like in the wild. And when gathering some material for the practical, came to collect on this beach, and actually one of the rock that is behind me was containing some filamentous seaweeds that we spread under a microscope to prepare for this practical. And actually we discovered a new pathogen that doesn't exist in the books for now. If you look at the, the aquaculture industry, the, the normal conventional fish farming, um, it's, it's, it's often boom and bust because of diseases. So if you look in Chilean aquaculture, then um, a couple of years back they had all of a sudden they got a virus in the, in, the, in the fish farms and it wiped out basically the production for that year and also a few following years after it in order to get rid of the virus. And so the same thing could happen when you start up uh, seaweed aquaculture. And so um, I think one of the big advantages that we have now in, in terms of the seaweed aquaculture is that we, we, we can learn from past mistakes that we've made. You just need to be patient, have a microscope and have fun collecting seaweeds and looking at them for hours. And what you find is really sometimes scary because from a, from a distance it doesn't look like there is a problem. But if you look under a microscope, it's really an ongoing war coming. You have aliens invading the seaweeds, entering the cells, preventing the cells from dying and eating them from the inside. It's really much better than science fiction and pathogens can definitely wipe out cultivation facilities and incur a very big economical and social um, cost for those farmers. Interacting with the people here and uh, talking about uh, seaweed diseases and what can be done is something that can help me to continue my research there and to see a way of helping the farmers in my own country. What we've been trying to do with Global Seaweed is to bring together experts from those mature sectors and promote the communication between UK policymakers, farmers, academics and the leaders of this worldwide seaweed economy to come up with guidelines in terms of practices and policy uh, integration to secure the sustainability uh, of seaweed aquaculture when it will arise in the UK. So the UK has got a really strong combined force, I guess, in terms of policy writing for animal health, aquatic animal health, aquaculture. It's a very long history of doing that. And also building upon the great academic um, resources we've got at places like Sam's and other places for aquaculture research. I think putting those two things together puts us right at the forefront of bringing together good policy for the seaweed industry into the future. And one of the major outcomes of the two first workshops has been the release of a policy brief in collaboration with the United Nations universities, really trying to define a policy roadmap to achieve sustainable um, seaweed aquaculture, both economically, of course, but most importantly for us, ecologically. This policy brief actually explains the challenges that the seaweed industry is facing worldwide. And whether it is in the tropics or in the temperate area, it is an important uh, crop in, in these countries for food and for uh, cash for the people. If, if the government researchers and all stakeholders will, for example, follow the recommendations from this uh, policy brief, I think it 
is possible to actually tackle certain challenges of seaweed farming worldwide. Now the third workshop has been really more focused on the future of seaweed cultivation, UK-wide, Europe-wide and worldwide. Although seaweed is a very benign form of aquaculture, nothing is without impact and we're trying to understand uh, what that impact is and we're finding that impact is probably quite positive in terms of habitat creation. We are laying the ground um, to build a national facility to collect and preserve the genetic diversity of uh, potentially interesting seaweeds, to protect this genetic diversity, to study it and to exploit it to achieve this sustainability that we talk about. I think the beauty of the Global Seaweed Programme, and this week especially, is that it allows us to get a real international perspective on the work we're doing. The Global Seaweed Programme brings in experts from all over the world. And what, what's important to understand is though in Scotland we have a relatively new and small business globally, Seaweed aquaculture is a massive industry worth six or seven billion dollars every year. And so by mixing with the international people, chatting to them, collaborating with them, we really understand where our expertise that we're developing here at SAMS fits into that global picture and where we can add value to that, that massive global industry.